Hello, and welcome to my capstone presentation. Our experiences is governed by pictures, pictures in newspapers and magazines, on television and in the cinema. Next to these pictures, first-hand experience begins to retreat, to seem more and more trivial, while at once it seemed that pictures had the function of interpreting reality, and now seems that they have usurped it. Quote by Douglas Kemp. So what is reality? Though Douglas Crimp was talking about the effects of early photography and the difference of generations brought up from before World War II, his point is just as relevant today as it was 42 years ago. Though instead of photography being the focus, we have to ask ourselves how our culture will look with the event of virtual reality and augmented reality when the year 2061 rolls around. Will we have evolved past our own social shortcomings and prejudiced beliefs? Or will we isolate ourselves in the image world that Susan Sontag describes in her book on photography, where images manipulate the human memory and leech away human curiosity to discover the world with our own senses? So welcome to my capstone, I guess. I have produced a very tiny graphic novel. It's... uh included a lot. I've taken over 250 location photographs. I made 44 pages in InDesign. I've read over 20 books, just for research purposes. In total, before creating this video and this presentation, my capstone project is currently taking up 16 gigabytes of data. Uh, I have four wipe off board illustrations that I actually took pictures of. The rest were erased. And I have filled two and a half sketchbooks, which all equals to one finished capstone project. So understanding your location changes everything. I took several trips into St. Louis to get a better idea of how the city sprawls towards Forest Park, which is where my story starts as it radiates out towards downtown. During these trips, I took photos of everything, from plant life growing at the zoo to how the arch is lit up at night. I also took pictures of some of the entrances to the underground Amtrak uh, areas, just to get an idea of what tunnels might look like, since we don't really have a subway system in St. Louis. Most of these photos are compromised of architecture, plants, and sculpture. These photos also help me visualize what these locations would look like if they were left to elements and allowed to crumble over time. I also took a few trips to the St. Louis Science Center to view the current traveling uh, Pompeii exhibit that they have, just to see what destruction can do to a location and to the left-behind objects like silverware and pottery. This kind of gave me the ideas of my project. So in doing that, I also spent a lot of time in the Lark this semester, uh, mostly working on other classwork, but in the study rooms, they now have wipe-off boards, and those were extremely helpful for getting over my fear of the blank page. So as my story evolved, I became more acquainted with the setting. I knew that I needed to get a better grasp on the style I was wanting to use to illustrate this project. I wanted something that wasn't too cartoony, but also something that wasn't too realistic, which would be time-consuming to draw. I started doing studies of Disney characters so that I could keep the soft, welcoming feel and attempt to go back in an attempt to back off some of the eager edginess of my own style. I also looked into some of the work of Hayao Miyazaki uh, as his backgrounds for this pro as the backgrounds for this project would be telling a lot of the story. And Hayao Miyazaki's work is extremely detailed, but yet still has that warm, welcoming, cartoony feel. Uh, the wipe-off sessions that I mentioned earlier, I didn't photograph all of them, uh, but it did let me work out, like, how does bamboo look when you try to draw it? Or how do landscapes work? Because I don't draw them very often, but I kind of like doing that now. Then I also just hit the books for research. Yes, I did read uh, 20 books. Hold up. I've read so many I've forgotten. Yes, I did actually read 20 books. There's also like about 10 to 12 that I've started reading and haven't finished just to get some research out there to put some data into this project. 
So research for a project like this basically never ends until the project itself ends. As for every new direction you take, there are unanswered questions, and the path of discovery is what fuels the creative process. Not counting all of the books, files, photos, and other materials I have looked through are produced for this project, my main goal for my capstone has persisted throughout. To explore how a culture, how as a culture, we would react to the effects of, of the cultural constructs of the other when all of our sources of information, including how we perceive the world, is controlled by an outside source. So, yes, I'm still looking at how we react to the other, but I'm also taking the fake news idea completely, like, to its end, where you couldn't even discern what was real or not. Would you still be thinking that the other was out there? Would you still hate the other? And that's basically what my capstone project is. So throughout the semester, I've been working on a story, and the story for this capstone project has been floating around in my head for quite some time. The challenge for me this semester was to wrangle that story onto paper so that it would be more of a rigid guideline that I could illustrate from. To succeed in this process, I had to do a little mental digging and make decisions about the environment in which the story would take place, because even in our reality, the world in which we live is a factor of how we interact with others. Which is why there's two and a half sketchbooks filled up with storyboards, outlines, um, and most, not all of that, but a large portion of that actually became part of the capstone project itself. So, uh, due to the extensive time it took hammering out the story path, character design development, world building, and writing all of that down, or typing it up, uh, the capstone evolved into more of a pitch book instead of a graphic novel. There's still, it's still a graphic novel. It's just not a complete 32-page graphic novel. Uh, so the pitch book, which is finished, I can take to future employers uh, or even to a publishing firm and pitch the story to them. Say, hey, here's this really awesome story. I have six pages of it illustrated. Can we continue this process? Or I can do it on my own. I can also use this graphic novel pitch book as a guide while I continue working on the project, producing my goal of a three-volume graphic novel, which, as I said before, I plan to continue working on after graduation. So working with technology isn't always the easiest thing to do in the world, but once you get it to work, it can do some amazing things. Overall, my capstone project, like I briefly mentioned, took up 44 pages, if you count the cover, leaving 42 to contain the bulk of the project. And no, sadly, these pages do not contain the meaning of life. Six of these pages are the preview for the illustrated graphic novel, and the other 36 pages cover the story, world building, character creation, and dedication to all of those who assisted me in the creation of the project, and other small files here and there to round out characters and to allow me to build upon what I've already written. Print definitely isn't dead yet. There is something special about holding on to the final finished copy of a book or magazine. The ability to flip through the pages and experience the views. And sometimes the smell as well. Though all you'd smell from this, if you were actually to print it, would be the ink. Though this is a printed project, due to the submission requirements, there will be no physical version included. The printed booklet by itself me measures 8.5 by 11 inches and lays mostly flat when open. So, like I said, though you guys won't have a printed copy of it, I do actually have a printed copy of it. So, um, it, it kind of has a really weird fold in the center. But besides that, this was really fun to put together. Got more character in there. I don't know if you can see that. So this has gone through a ton of revisions. Uh, I do. I did finally get everything illustrated, which is awesome. It's been a lot of sleepless nights, but I am glad this is finished, and I hope you guys enjoy uh, looking over this and reading over it. And so, thank you for listening to me ramble about my capstone project, and I hope to see you all at graduation.